I don't know about you. I'm sure you do, obviously, in terms of consuming many different media outlets contents. I mean, I do as well. But when it comes to other shows that are newsy or political in nature, I don't do a lot of it because I don't want it to basically steer my opinion in a certain direction. There are people I like, I respect, that I watch, that I'll take in from time to time. But I don't have necessarily appointment watching or listening because I don't want it to cloud my opinion. So I have not really listened a lot to Tucker Carlson's stuff since he launched his own podcast. And I am not familiar at all with this guy, uh, Daryl Cooper, who he had on. But obviously, you know, if it turns out that he's a Nazi sympathizer, as he's been called, then, yeah, that's a bad interview. Uh, But does that mean that people in Kansas City can't get his opinions and other stuff in the world going on right now at T-Mobile next Thursday? Like, come on. Both those things can be true. Bad interview, bad guest, don't platform someone like that. But also, there are other reasons and other ideas that may draw people to an event in downtown Kansas City next week. Both those things can be true at the same time. It's not that difficult. It's not. But I will say there is an appetite now on the left and the right to push narratives, pursue narratives, and talk to guests on shows who are challenging history. Is history really what we make of it? And that's how you end up like, in situations where you have cranks on and quacks on who, you know, somehow try to rewrite World War II and things of that nature. And that's unfortunately how it happens. Whether or not that's the case here, I don't know. I have not listened to it. Okay, I'm not going to comment on something I have not listened to. But the broader conversation is worth pointing out as it relates to local media, the Kansas City Star, and what's happening next week in this town with uh, Tucker Carlson. Now, on the national level, this Georgia high school uh, shooting suspect, I know it's obviously, sadly, been a story that we've had to cover and follow here in um, recent days. And the mugshot for the shooter has been released. The 14-year-old is currently being held in a Department of Juvenile Justice facility, reportedly uh, helping in the sheriff's office's investigation. New reports are suggesting that the shooter was obsessed with other school shooters, like Parkland's Nicholas Cruz. He was also obsessed with Adam Lanza from the Sandy Hook Elementary school tragedy. He allegedly had a Discord account with the username Lanza, written in Russian, and he was known to the FBI, who was tipped off about him one year ago. He was even questioned at the time by officers from Jackson County, Georgia. Now, If you've seen the mugshot, do not jump to the conclusion a lot of people are trying to jump to right now on social media. They're trying to jump to a conclusion that this guy, he's got long bleached hair, so he must be someone who wants to be a different gender. Stop with that. Stop. Stop. He's a white guy with bleached hair, and it's long, okay? Um, When Mark and I were growing up in the late 90s, early 2000s, Mark will remember this, the bleached hair was in. Remember the bleached hair, Mark? I don't know if it's coming back for the kids, but you remember. Oh, yeah. Did you have it? I did not have it. So Mike Piazza had it, Uh New York Mets catcher. Yep. And uh, my brother had it for a little bit. Now, he had, you know, kind of like the bleached spiked hair look that was big back then. Kind of the Eminem look a little bit. Yeah, he was, yes, a little bit of that. Trying to think of some of the other musicians that kind of had that look. I'm blanking on who had it. But it wasn't really the rapper Eminem look. It was kind of more like the rocker look. They had the bleached tips for a little bit. Oh, yeah. yeah, You remember Some 41 Yes, yes, yes. That's who I, some 41. Thank you. Gosh, there's a reference I haven't heard in a long time there, Mark. Very well done. So I don't know if bleached hair is back for teenage guys, but he's got long hair and it's bleached, okay? So let's let's not be, oh boy, he's, you know, and jump to that conclusion because that's not the story here. That's just like easy social media fodder. The story now is that the parents are involved. And the parents have been charged. So that is right now where this story is going. And that, to me, 
is the far more interesting angle in all this. The father has now been charged with involuntary manslaughter, second-degree murder, and cruelty to children. The most severe ever filed against the parent of an alleged school shooter. This is what we need. The parents are going to have to pay the price because that's how we get some people to start waking up here. And by the way, for some people saying, well, this is unfair. It's on the kid. Try him as an adult. By the way, all that should be true as well. Yeah, try him as an adult. Absolutely. I agree with that. Okay. But this is happening, by the way, in deep red Georgia, where they're trying the father with two counts of second degree murder. And that's exactly where this conversation needs to go from here. 913-408-7957. And I want to continue it with you here on KCMO because I don't know what else to do right now. I know, I know, I know. Gavin Newsom says if we just take away everyone's guns, he's going to create this utopia. uh, Just like he's done with the homeless crisis there in California and everything is going to be great. Oh my, you just wait till Gavin Newsom's in charge. Oh, you mean we have an example of that with 50 million people who are fleeing the most beautiful state in America because of his awful policies? I'll pass. But the way that you maybe help curtail this is by saying to parents, if you are going to ignore this many red flags, you're going to be charged as well. And by the way, I wonder if this can not just apply to school shooters, but if stuff like this could potentially apply to other criminal suspects who are juveniles in other walks of life. The school shooter always gets the most headlines, but we have juveniles committing heinous acts of crime all over the country On a daily basis, including here in Kansas City, juveniles allegedly shot and killed the owner of Brady and Fox last week. Could you charge the parents in cases like that as well? Where do you draw the line? I just wonder where you draw that line, but I'm absolutely a fan of it. Because at some point, if you are raising a child and you have so many red flags where that child is showing signs of potentially doing harm, to other people in society, and you don't do anything about it, it's time to hold these parents accountable and hold them responsible. And I'm glad that the Georgia authorities are taking this approach and laying the hammer down. 913-408-7957. Let's go to Aletha. Uh, Kendra is on KCMO. Kendra, good morning. What's happening? Good morning. I just wanted to, to agree with you that absolutely the parents should be tried um, or charged. Um, I'm I'm a parent. I'm responsible for what my son has access to. I'm responsible for knowing who he's talking to, what his interests are. And you're right. I mean, they had a ton of red flags. But even if those red flags aren't knocking on your door and talking to you a year ago um, about these concerns and the FBI, I mean, you're responsible for finding those red flags as a parent. So even if you didn't have those blatant red flags you're still responsible for your child i mean they had the red flags they spoke to authorities last year and the dad continued to give him access to his weapons i mean it's it's a no-brainer the Mm -hmm. father should be absolutely responsible absolutely kendra thank you so much and uh, appreciate the call no listen i i'm i'm i don't know where most of you are going to fall on this i'm sure there's a case on the other side but Anytime this happens, what do people want to do? They want to scream about guns. And every time it happens, it's like, that's not going to change. You're not going to change the Second Amendment because of a school shooter. It's not going to happen. There are 300 million guns in this country. But what is a realistic thing to do to make sure that parents are doing their job in part. And that's a huge failure we have in society today. Parents don't want to parent, okay? They want to hand their kids off to somebody else. They want to give them a phone and sit them in front of the TV all day. And I'm not like an anti-TV guy, okay? Our kids watch TV. 
but they just want to totally check out and not do the job that needs to be done. Put it on somebody else, play the victim card, whatever it might be. You got a parent. It's on you. And while I don't think this is going to prevent something like this from ever happening again, I don't think there's one simple answer. It is something that societally we have to start pursuing, especially when you've got as many clear red flags in a case like you have in this one. 913-408-7957. Donna's in Paola. Donna, good morning. You're on KCMO. Hey, good morning. I absolutely agree with you. And first I'm going to say, I'm a little mom with two kids, and I raised my kids from the time they were tiny by myself. So they can't come out and say that it's just because the father's not in the household. I think the parents need to parent their children, and they need to be held responsible. Don't send them to school and expect the school to do their job. Mm -hmm. They need to make sure that the kids are growing up with morals and, uh, and ethics and understand exactly what's right and wrong. Mm -hmm. Because if you were to do that, you would not have the problems that you have with the gangs, with the kids that are, look at New York, walking around and punching people on the street because they can. You know, being completely oblivious to the fact that cops are even there and not caring and actually going after the cops. These parents need to be held responsible so that parents start doing their job again. Absolutely. Because as a gun owner, I'm going to tell you right now, they need to stay out of our, you know, it's not the gun's fault that somebody shot somebody. It's not the car's fault that somebody got hit by a car. You can't blame the inanimate object. You've got to blame the person holding or handling it. Yep, that is. And the that children, are, you know, the parents are handling those children, and they should be up until a certain age of 18 or better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well said, Donna. Thank you very much. Uh, spot on. It never is. An inanimate object. It never is. But, you know, it's where people like to go because it's easy. John's in Wichita. John, you're on KCMO. What's happening, man? Hey, boss. Uh, love the show. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Um, I, I agree with everything you're saying here. The parents have to be held accountable, responsible. You, you got this entire generation of moms and dads that want to be the child's friend versus the parent. And I don't want to spank my kid because it's going to hurt their feelings. Get over it. Get over it. Like, you end up with situations like this. It's tragic. It's terrible. But until moms and dads start doing what moms and dads are supposed to do, it ain't going to stop. Yeah. Well, John, are, you, are we booming down there in Wichita, 95.7 FM, or are you on the app? Uh, I got you on the app, brother. I'm a truck driver, and I found your show probably three weeks ago, man, and I haven't left your channel. That's what I love to hear. Woo! Thank you, John. Appreciate you, buddy. No worries. Thank you. All right, man. Steven's in Kansas City. What's up, Steve? Yeah, uh, Mundo, I think you've hit on something here, man. Maybe it's the two hours of sleep and hobnobbing with celebrities at the world's biggest tailgate, but... I'm normally totally against government intervention, but, you know, this, this may be one of the tools, uh, you know, tools in the toolbox. Uh, Quentin Lucas is too stupid and Dean Peters Baker too stupid to do this. But when you're dealing with Venezuelan gangs in Dallas and Chicago and Colorado, they're, they're using juveniles and theft rings at the Walmart, according to the Colorado case. And they know the juveniles won't be prosecuted, but boy, uh, if we can use this to kind of get the, get everybody around them, uh, obviously this case in Georgia, the the kid got a gun for Christmas after he'd been surveilled, and uh, I I got to say this is uh, this, we don't need more hope and feelings and and world and world peace. We we need charges for these for these. Uh, animal parent the appearance of the animals from the chief shooting and the uh and the irish restaurant that's what i'm talking I, about I that's like yeah that's I, where i, I wonder kind of warm it warms the cockles it warms the cockles <laughs> of my heart after last night I, maybe, maybe who? i'm in a good mood or something i i don't know what who is, is hobnobbing what, with what you, what celebrities go, going after who going is after these guys would you let me talk would you let me talk you know, on my own show legit. turn him down mark oh my does he even want to talk is he still drunk at the game my goodness. Are, are you there, Steven? He's still talking. Turn it up. Turn it up. Let me hear. He's still talking. Unbelievable. Are you there? 
I'm here. Okay. Can I ask? Can you I talk? Go, can I talk for a second? You didn't go to the, you didn't go to the tailgate last night? The tailgate? Uh, you sounds like you're still tailgating, brother. I got two hours of sleep, man. It's the world's biggest tailgate. All Listen, right. Thank you, girl. Steve. Thank, thank, uh, thank you. <laughs> Uh, Steven sounds like he's still out in the parking lot. That's the guy. Still out in uh, Lot L. Having a good time there. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. All right. Uh, Chris and Blue Springs, go ahead. You're on KCMO. Yeah, I think you're you're talking about going down a slippery slope here that's going to go fast and hard against them. You know, against legal gun owners, that's what the that's what the left wants. Hey, if you didn't lock up your gun at night and somebody comes in and takes your gun, every crime that's committed with that gun, you're now on the hook for. If somebody I, gets killed with that gun, you're going to get charged for murder because you didn't take care of it good enough. We're going that's we're going way down the wrong direction. And we also know they're not going to charge every parent that has a kid with a, that commits a crime with a gun. They're not going to charge the kids in Chicago. Those those kids that are you know in gang killings, they're not going to charge those parents. Those parents are going to get off scot free. It's the it's the white suburban parents that like to go out hunting the the Republicans. That's who's going to get charged because that's who the prosecutors want to charge. And you can keep that this in the hands of prosecutors. No, thank you, uh, Chris. I and I understand that concern. I really do. And that's why I, I a lot of it will come down to who your prosecutor is. And I don't like that because you just want to have equity in the rule of law and how you apply it, but. That's where this conversation does get slippery. And I'm totally understanding of that. Now, in this case in Georgia, I look at it and I say, why not charge the parents with all the red flags you've got? I get it. and But I also look at some of the kids here in Kansas City, right? I mean, involved with the Super Bowl parade shooting. We talked about this briefly after those juveniles were charged. And we said, okay, is there actually a role here in potentially charging parents? Where do you say parents are derelict in duty and putting other people at risk? And it's not black or white. Carl, Independence, got a minute, buddy. Go ahead. Okay. Um, what a, I kind of take a, a counter opinion to yours of charging the parents. And the problem is with the uh, female single head of household. The, once the boys get t- teenage, they're bigger than mama. And mama can't control them. And that's where we go back to your conversation of yesterday, the loss of fathers in in the family. Mm-hmm. And those, the loss of fathers is directly tied to a lot of uh, progressive programs that were instita- instituted in the 60s mm-hmm. that removed the fathers from the family. Yeah, and 80... that's been devastated to us. And this is a long-term penalty we're paying for progressivism. Thank you very much there. Uh, We appreciate it, Carl. You're right. Um, 85% of juveniles incarcerated are fatherless. And that's across racial backgrounds, obviously. That's just an overall number. 85% of juveniles incarcerated did not grow up with a father. Uh, You can't deny those numbers. Walter in Spring Hill, you're last up. What's up? I have to agree. You have to put it uh, along the lines with the parents because – I was raised, I was a young black kid, and my mom watched, ruled with an iron fist. I was more afraid of her than I was anything else. If I even thought about doing something like this, man, I was scared she would beat the black off of me. <laughs> and a lot of these, a lot of these, a lot of these kid professionals, these professionals say, well, you know, your kids shouldn't fear you. I say, crap on that. That fear is respect. Mm-hmm. And so, and, and like the previous caller said, she was a single parent, and, you know, the parent, you start with this young. You discipline these kids. You tear that little butt up when it needs to be tore up when they're young. And instill the fear of God in them when they act up and do something stupid. Did you say, you I just that. I just want to make sure I heard you right there, Walter. Did you say you were afraid your mother was going to slap the black off of you? Yeah. I was, <laughs> yeah. Okay. I was afraid if I did something like that, she would beat the black off me. Now, I'm I, not advocating beating the kid. No, no, no. I, a, I, a good old-fashioned butt whooping every now and then is what is what is needed. Yeah. Well, that's a first. I've not heard that line before, but uh, it's pretty good. <laughs> All right. I, I, I had some fear of my old man, but I was never fearful he was going to slap the white off of me. Slap the half Italian, half Irish off of me. That was never a concern. 